Whew. That was a banger. Where, where am I? Oh, I got one more brewski. Well, it's a, it's a, it's a soda. I wish I had a bottle open. Oh, hey. Hey you party animals, welcome back to Electrified Reviews. My name is Mitch, this is the soda bike from Michael Blast. Now last night I had a wonderful time, uh, I, I think, and I woke up in the woods, so that's good, and I was with an e-bike, so I was like, hey, might as well do a review. So let's uh, jump into the review. Hi everyone, today we're gonna take a close look at the 2023 soda bike from Michael Blast. An e-bike that promises to bring a new thrilling flavor to your daily rides and weekend adventures. Coming in with a price tag of 1,999 bucks, this bike is designed to combine performance, comfort, and style. Definitely style. The first thing you'll notice about the soda bike is its mid-step frame design. This provides an easy on and off experience and combined with an upright riding position ensures a comfortable journey whether you're riding to work or just exploring nature's trails. With a standover height of 26 inches and a reach of 15 inches, this bike caters to a wide range of riders. The standard saddle and seat post suspension provide added comfort for those bumpy rides and it's not quite as nice as a full suspension ride, but the included seat post suspension definitely elevates the ride feel here. One of the most attractive features of this e-bike is its removable 624 watt hour battery. With a minimum range of 25 to 30 miles, it provides you with enough power for your daily commutes or leisure rides. It utilizes Samsung cells and in a day when there are a ton of cheaper options out there, it's cool to see them bring in some quality cells to the platform. Plus, being removable means you can charge it on or off the bike. The included faux leather battery cover is a nice touch, blending some throwback vibes with the tech of today. The soda bike is equipped with a powerful Michael Blast branded rear hub motor. It's rated at 500 watts with torque of about 65 newton meters. When it ships, this e-bike is class two, which means it has a throttle, in this case, a thumb throttle, and can assist you up to top speeds of 20 miles per hour, whether you are using the throttle or pedal assist. You do have the option to unlock it for higher speeds, but we test it as it comes right out of the box. So if you're a speed demon like myself, you'll just have to adjust a few settings and you'll be speeding around in no time. Rolling on 20 inch by four inch compass tires, the soda bike is built to take on diverse terrain. And with the unbranded hydraulic brakes featuring 180 millimeter rotors, it assures you a reliable stopping pattern, no matter the conditions. The tires here are dope. I am a fan of colored sidewalls and aesthetically, I think this was the right choice here. The brakes work well, even for being unbranded. I love that we get hydraulic brakes here and they function well, as I mentioned. To complement its robust performance, the soda bike features a seven speed Shimano Altus gear set with Shimano trigger shifters and a front suspension with 80 millimeters of travel for smooth rides over various terrain. Plus with front lights for visibility and safety, you're ready for rides at any time of the day. Now it would be cool to see some other features here like an integrated tail light, but maybe we'll get that on the next generation of the bike. Something that should definitely stay is the fun bottle opener on the front of the bike. Michael Blast does have a front basket you can throw on, but gosh darn, how am I gonna open my beer with that? If you also wanna throw on some fenders or a rear rack, you can purchase those separately from Michael Blast's website. And last but not least, this e-bike boasts a color LCD display where you can monitor your speed, distance, battery life, and a few other key metrics us e-bike folk like to see on our rides. The display can be adjusted both physically and brightness wise, so it was easy to see even in the hot, direct Texas sun. The soda bike weighing about 65 pounds with a weight limit of 260 pounds is clearly designed with practicality, performance, and the rider's comfort in mind. It's a superb choice for anyone looking to spice up their neighborhood rides and for those that wanna look cool while doing it. How do I know how cool you look on this thing? Well, it's cause I rode it around. Let's do some riding together on the ride test. Do you want to be the coolest cat on the block rolling up to the party on your brand new electric bike? Well, it could be this one. It could be one of the other bikes we have over at electrifiedreviews.com. You can head over there, compare them all against each other, check out all the specs, look at some extra pictures. We're always running some sort of giveaway, so if you want to roll up to the party on a free e-bike, head over to electrifiedreviews.com, and we'll see you there. Vote for Pedro. All right, guys, we're out here for the ride test on the soda bike from Michael Blast. And I'm not gonna lie, these things are a blast. This is the second Michael Blast bike we've been on last week or so. And yeah, just having a good time. This one is much different. The other one was the Outsider 5.0 that we reviewed. That one's a little bit more of a motorcycle kind of vibe. And this is just sort of like a fun 
not too serious e-bike. We got this leather case for the battery, which is kind of fun. And then we've got a bottle opener right here, which is pretty dope. Um, make sure you don't shake the, you know, the bottles before you do that. It'll, uh, it'll explode everywhere. But nothing a little, little rag can't fix. But anyway, we're not here to talk about the bike necessarily. Let's go ahead and uh, head out for the ride test. I'm gonna throw my rock form case on there. And it's not, it doesn't really fit right here, and there's not really a whole lot of good spots to put it there. So I'm like, oh, I'll just throw it down there on the top tube. So it works out pretty well. You guys can't see it, but just know that it's there. Doing what it needs to do. All right, now I've got it in pedal assist level five. Similar to the other Michael Blast, there is, if you double click, you know, either of these as you're changing your level of pedal assist, it'll go in from sports mode to you know, eco mode. So go ahead and let's try this in pedal assist level zero and the throttle doesn't work, which again is a nice safety feature to have. Go ahead and put it in pedal assist level one on eco. We'll see what we can get out of it. So it looks like we are gonna have access to the full throttle here, which is awesome. But in eco mode, as you can tell, it's a very smooth um, you know, in my opinion, sort of slow power curve. So let's go ahead and put it into sports mode, even if we're in pedal assist level one. Start to feel that power a little bit more right off the bat. And it's gonna get us up to our top speed of 20 miles per hour. Now, even though this is a fat tire bike, because it's just, you know, it's small and compact, it's very reminiscent of a BMX bike, super maneuverable. I mean, this is, yeah, pretty well, but at the same time, feel stable. I don't know how to explain it. It's the stableness of, of a fat tire, but also the nimbleness of just having such a small bike here. And we could cruise around like this for, for quite a while, just having a good time. The grips we have here, similar to the Outsiders, they are sort of a cushiony faux leather bit, and they don't really, move but they are a little bit you know squishy so sometimes it feels like you might not have a full a full grip on, on it but it's just uh it's just comfortable so if you do have to hold down it for a while then this is something where your hands aren't going to get tired as easily because it's uh real comfy now let's go ahead and we're in pedal assist level one i wish it probably stopped because we're just going to Cruise down to that level. Cruising on down. Let's cruise on up. Oh, see, I put it in eco mode. That's one thing that you got to get used to on this one is uh, not double tapping it. Because if you double tap it, and you uh, you go in eco mode, or as I like to call it, extra slow mode. So now we're in gear seven over here and no ghost pedaling at all. This is a very nice cadence. So if I was gonna be riding this bike for a while, this is kind of where I would want to, uh, where you wanna have it. Man, who is that guy? That looks familiar, he's just hanging out with, the, with an e-bike. Must be one of those e-bike reviewer types. They're all over the place these days. Reviewing e-bikes, doing bikes, doing reviews. I didn't have a shirt on and a very cuddly dog. Kind of confusing. So you'd have like a pit bull or something, you know, but that's just me. Um, you know, some people like to call that stereotyping. I like to call it generalization. All right. But anyway, that's not a bike. Let's, uh, let's get back to this. Now, this is a smaller bike, as I mentioned. So right now, I've got the GoPro pointed down a little bit just to get a good perspective of the bike. Hopefully you're seeing enough of the road ahead that this isn't uh, tragically boring. But uh, yeah, so as it sits, it is a little bit of a smaller bike. So I'm 5'10", you know, 220 or so. And this is, it feels, it feels small. If I'm looking for a, if I'm looking for a bike that is, you know, sort of my everyday ride and I'm riding around all the places, um, you would have to, you know, raise the seat up a little bit 
to get that good pedal geometry going. But this really isn't that bike, right? Like this, I mean, it's got a, a bottle opener in the front. So this isn't a bike that you're looking to do some serious commuting with. Uh, you know, for me, it seems like it's something that'd be fun to scoot around if you live in a community where you've got restaurants, places you can bike to. Just kind of cool, kick around bike. You know, you want to show up, be the coolest kid at the party. That would definitely be something that uh, this bike would, would bring to the table. Let's see, it looks like, uh, looks like this trail might not be too bad. Getting a lot of rain here recently, so you know, always gotta be careful. Heading off into the woods. Oh, oh. I usually come the other way on this particular trail, and for some reason, Feels like the trees are closer together when you come this way. Obviously that can't be true, but that's just what it seems like. Now again, this isn't something, okay, see that's what I was, that's what I was looking for. Can't be riding through that, guys. Go ahead and turn it around, and we're back on the trail. As I was saying before, got ran into the Nile over there, this is not a bike, like this isn't necessarily the terrain that you'd want to take it on, but we do have fatter tires, we do have front suspension, so this is definitely very nice. And the seat post suspension, even though this is not some high-end seat post suspension that's, uh, you know, made from special clouds or something like that, it does do a good job of absorbing, you know, these roots and sticks and bumps and all the sort of stuff that we got in here. Because if I was on a, you know, hard tail on the suspension, I would definitely be feeling a lot of those, a little bit more. And yeah, now we're just, uh, we're just cruising. Just cruising. Let's go ahead and do a braking test over here Get to the top of this hill, going about 20. I mean, you can lock out those brakes pretty much instantaneously if you wanted to. I don't know how many of those slides we ended up using in the intro, but I got in some good slides when we were out there filming that stuff. Let's see, get to a spot that's a little more open so I don't slide around a corner into somebody. That wouldn't be great. So we're going along 20 miles per hour. Let's do a little slide action. Too easy. Come on, man. Come on. I'm gonna do a little bit more, more extreme here. Yeah. I could do that all day. I know I say that every time I do a review, but it's like when I got on the bike and I start doing some sliding, it's like, dude, just do that all day, every day. That's just how she do. That's, the, I think, maybe one of the other benefits of having a small bike. <coughs> oh, hello. Uh, eyes up here, guys. Eyes up here. One well, of the nice things about having a, a small bike is if you, uh, you know, get thrown off like that, you can just whip it around. No worries. Ooh, I'm gonna show this other review guy. Show him how, how we review things around here. I don't want to startle him too much, but he's looking at his phone or something. What's up, bro? Like we're in a like we're in a gang now. This guy's mine. He's with me. So there's a little behind the scenes action for you. This is how we uh, how we get review stuff done. Oh, dude, don't don't fall down in the middle of this video. Nice and uh, maneuverable, maneuverable, maneuvering. Look at this. Oh, he can't do this though. He's not on the soda bike. But yeah, guys, I think that is gonna do it for our review on the soda bike from Michael Blast. If you guys wanna check him out, we'll have a link to him somewhere down below. And if you guys are interested in purchasing our review units, you can check those out online as well. well that's all for today. Until next time, we'll catch you on the next one. I can't even get my own catchphrase right. Gotta work on my own catchphrase. Sir, hello? Talking to a fluffy dog over there.
Thank you so much for riding along with us for our review of the soda bike from Michael Blast. If you guys want to know more about them, I'll have a link to them down in the description. If you guys want to check out the written reviews, some pictures, some extra cool little goodies, things like that, you can head on over to electrifiedreviews.com. Otherwise, thank you so much for hanging with us, and we'll catch you on the next one.